Hi, my name is David Self, and this is my presentation of my ePortfolio for Fort Hayes State University. I am currently a non-degree seeking student in the school's leadership program. A little bit more about me as I scroll down through my ePortfolio here. Um, I currently teach at Wichita Heights High School, where I've taught since the 2000-2001 school year, and I'm also the chairman of the Fine Arts Department. You can read a little bit more about me right here. Looking at my personal goals, the first thing I want to talk about is my number one goal is that as I enter the administrative and school leadership side of my career, I want to make sure that I maintain um, and be a present and dedicated father and husband. I want to continue to inspire other teachers, school leaders um, to be continual learners and seek continual improvement. And in the future, I want to try to have an opportunity to really see my educational philosophy in action. My professional goals, right now I plan to stay employed with USD 259. I've been with this district my entire career and I believe in the direction we're going and the philosophy we have and I would like to stay with this district as a school leader as well. I would also like to, um, in the next short term, I'd like to see myself in the next year or two as an assistant principal and then eventually becoming a school principal and then possibly um, a district leader as well. Moving on and looking at my plan of study, um, I started this program in January of 2017. It took me just over a year to complete the 21 required hours for the non-degree endorsement, and uh, those are listed right there. Looking at my resume, uh, you can see a little bit of information about me. Of course, here's my employment experience, which I spoke about Wichita Heights High School a second ago. Um, I've also done some adjunct uh, professor work at Fringe University and you can see my education here. I received my master's degree in 1998 from Wichita State University and my bachelor's from Southeastern Oklahoma State in 1994. My philosophy of education, when I was coming into this program I wasn't really sure what my philosophy of education was or my leadership philosophy. And um, what I found through this research is that I, I'm really what I would consider myself, I would be a combination of a servant leader and a transformational leader. I believe in leading by example. I would never ask any of my employees or staff to do something I wasn't willing to do myself. And uh, I believe in building relationships based on trust, and I believe in, in transparency. And I also believe in... Um, Creating a school environment, a learning environment that uh, where all school community members, students, staff members, family, they feel welcomed, they feel cared for, and um, they feel safe. And I think those are the things that I would, how I would describe myself as a school leader in philosophy. Moving on and looking at my uh, bibliography, I had a hard time narrowing it down to just 10 articles or books that I'd read. I read quite a bit during this time when I could, and um, I really want to talk about, I'm going to kind of scroll through these, but the one I really want to stop and talk about is this one. Um, number three on my list, and that's uh, What Great Principles Do Di Do Differently by Todd Whitaker. And Mr. Whitaker wrote in this book one line that really impacted me a lot, and it was uh, the line that great principles do not focus on programs, they focus on people. And I felt like that really uh, entailed and embraced um, what I believe as an as a educational leader. And that's kind of what I founded my educational philosophy on, just that one sentence and what he talks about in this, in this book. And um, very good stuff. And if I move on through here, you can see a couple other ones I've read. Another one I want to talk about briefly, number seven, is uh, Start With Why by Simon Sinek. Uh, Mr. Sinek talks about in this book not just knowing what you do, but knowing why you do it and how that's so important. If you can discover why you're doing something, you're, you're going to be a better leader than just uh, going through the motions. And um, very good stuff. And you can see a few other works here. Another book by, uh, well, there's Richard Marzano. I did a lot of reading on his book because uh, our district recently adopted um, a teacher evaluation model based on his framework. And another book by Simon Sinek, Leaders Eat Last, another really good one. Moving on and looking at my activities, at the elementary level, um, I would say probably the one that was most um, ex beneficial for me and eye-opening was I spent this one over here on the left, elementary principal observation. I spent half a day 
um, shadowing Mrs. Cindy Graves at McLean Elementary here in Wichita. These pictures are a little slow loading, loading but uh, the day started in the cafeteria at lunchtime, and I was blown away at what it takes to organize and successfully feed all these elementary students. Um, everything runs like clockwork, and it, it was really um, inspiring to see how much Mrs. Graves juggles all the different things she does. And uh, I don't have any experience in my career as an elementary teacher, so this was really eye-opening for me. And I enjoyed it. It um, also had to deal with that day. I had to help her work with some teacher evaluations, giving a tour of the school to a new future student, and also um, some disciplinary problems that occurred on the playground that day. Great day and all. Also, I helped with some elementary art and service where I provided strategies and curriculum uh, practices to increase rigor in the art classroom. And I also helped with McLean Elementary's um, enrollment this summer. Uh, this is a mobile computer lab that was set up. All of our enrollment now in our district is done online. A lot of our parents don't have access to um, the internet at home, so my role was to help help them get logged into the computer, access their student records, and uh, help them get their child enrolled for this school year. At the secondary level, I, I logged a lot of hours. I really dove into this aspect of this requirement. Um, I logged a total of just over 330 hours and um, a lot of that came from student uh, extracurricular activity supervision um, i observed and supervised about every um, sport that we offer at our school uh, those can be four and five hour nights sometimes two and three hour three nights a week um, but i also tried to get involved in some other things um, here i went and you can see where i helped with some instrumental music concert supervision and here's one of those sporting events we talked about. But the one I really want to look at right here in the middle is bus supervision. This is something that happens every day at school. It's something that I think can become very mundane and day-to-day -day that we really don't think about. But it was really probably the one I enjoyed the most. Every day since January of last year, I have um, gone out and after school, assisted school personnel and security and other administrators in just monitoring our students as they load the buses. It provided me an opportunity to build relationships with students that I've never met before and um, been really, really powerful for me. I, not only did I get to build relationship with kids, but I got to work with um, other members of the school community you don't think about a lot, school bus drivers, school bus company employees, working with them to solve transportation problems, whether it's just reassigning a bus route or maybe a discipline uh, situation that happened on the school bus. And um, just monitor, uh, we also were responsible for logging the location of each bus route. We have 23 bus routes at our school, logging all of those bus routes, where they are in the bus line, and helping students find their appropriate buses. And you can see that here. At the district level, I participated in a couple of different events. Um, the one that I think is probably the most uh, beneficial for me as a future school leader was uh, this first one listed here, Marzano Observation Scenarios. I worked with a team of other teachers from the district. We recently, I stated earlier, our district recently adopted a new teacher evaluation model based on Richard Marzano's framework. And what we found is that a lot of our school leaders, assistant principals and principals, we're not well versed in what goes on in a fine arts classroom. So I was asked to um, be on a team that wrote scenarios that were used for training purposes. And this was a lot of fun, I enjoyed it, and I thought this is the kind of thing I'd like to do eventually, help uh, mold and shape other administrators to um, be better at their job and their careers. And um, here's an attachment of one of the um, scenarios that we wrote. I also participated in help organizing the district common assessment for instrumental music. This was an event where all eight high schools in our district converged in one place. I helped coordinate um, teachers and bands and where they were supposed to go and making sure everyone was safely arrived and left when they were supposed to. I also participated in our district required new teacher orientation. Um, this is me right here with a group of new teachers from my high school, just introducing them to our campus our school culture and our belief and philosophy. And if I move on into my reflection. 
So during the exploration stage, uh, some of my preconceptions coming in, I, I really had this idea that this program was going to be a lot about educational philosophy, and it was going to be a lot about things that um, I've seen a lot of things come and go in my career in the last 18 years. A lot of times there will be new ideas, new philosophies that come along, and it's one of those where you look at it and you think, hey, this is going to work really good on paper, but in the real-life classroom, it'll never fly. And that's really what I thought this program was going to be. Um, but as I, I, I got into the explanation stage here, I found out that I could not, be, I could not have been more wrong. Uh, there are a lot of things I found that I didn't know, a lot of things I thought I knew a lot about, and I had no idea. Um, mainly, I think about my classes in um, special education for the um, school leaders and the uh, utilization of technology class. I never thought really about the way that new 21st century learners are impacted by the amount of information we have now and the ease of access to it. Um, I never really thought about the amount of um, legalities and legal information that go along with school finance and special education, and that's just to name a few. There are a lot of others that I explain here. Um, but as I scroll on down here and I go into my conjecture stage, I came up with this statement. How can I embrace new proven educational theories and practices that are effective and functional in real-life classroom learning and teaching environments? And what must I do as a school leader to stay abreast of the legal aspects of education and government policies at the local, state, and federal level? And if I go into my analysis stage and really dive into this a little bit more, it made me really kind of ask this question to myself. Uh, how dedicated am I to traditional school learning? How, how dedicated am I to um, embracing new technology and new philosophy? Uh, I teach in a program, I teach a hands-on three-dimensional art class where really technology has been used to just kind of make my life easier. And I realize now that I need to really be um, presenting that more to my students and getting them involved. So it made me stop and really question that. It also made me really look at um, what do I know about special education? How can I learn more? And what can I do to stay on top of these um, requirements that are um, that will just meet the needs of our, our students who have uh, special needs, and um, I wanted to make sure I could do that. My synthesis stage, I go on to discuss. I realized that in the synthesis stage, I've got to be proactive. I have got to become um, a student myself. I have got to stay abreast, as I said in my conjecture, of new trends, new technology, how it's affecting our kids, how it can be implemented into the classroom to enhance their learning not convenience, not a convenience for me. And so I think um, I would have to really get engaged in some digital online communities um, and really lean on my district. They provide support in these areas of technology, of special education, of school finance, and they provide training. And I think I would really have to lean on that and really work to be a student myself and stay abreast of these things. But in conclusion, um, this has been a great program for me. It's helped me to realize what kind of leader I am, what my philosophy is, and it's also allowed me to see my shortcomings and figure out a way and, and develop a plan to deal with that. Thank you very much for watching. Again, my name is David Self, and this is my ePortfolio presentation.